Welcome to iLector Online. We have learned in the previous videos that even though we can get very good information out of the mean, the median, the mode, and the mid range, sometimes they can lose meaning when the data distribution is unusual. For example, we have certain outliers or we have things skewed in one direction or the other. And so to get a better feel for how valuable or how accurate or how useful those measures are, and they're called measures of central tendency, well, we need some additional measures. They're called measures of dispersion. We want to see how the data is dispersed. And some of those measures, well, they are range, deviation from the mean, the absolute deviation, the mean absolute deviation, the variance, and the standard deviation. And the standard deviation being a very important one, there are some checks that we use, such as Chebyshev's theorem, empirical rule, probability paper, and test for normality to see how well we can trust the standard deviation information or how it truly represents what we're looking for. So a quick overview of what some of these things are. First of all, the range. The range is simply the difference between the highest value and the lowest value of your data. In this case, 10 minus 2 equals 8. And of course, if that range is very large compared to the mean or the average, well, then uh, we can say that we need to be very careful how we interpret the values. Even the median and the mode can be skewed by the fact that we have a very large range. The deviation from the mean is the difference between any one of the data points minus the average. This here symbol, an X with a line over it, means the average or the mean. And so when we take each value, for example, we take 2 minus the average. Remember the average was 4.9. Then 2 minus 4.9, well, that's going to give you a negative number. For example, we take the first data point, 2 minus the mean, which was 4.9. That gives us minus 2.9. So that's the difference between the smallest value and the average value. So that's why sometimes we talk about the absolute deviation because we sometimes don't really care that it's negative or positive. We just want to know how much the absolute difference is. And then we take the absolute value of the deviation from the mean. That's called the absolute deviation. And then we simply put absolute values around it. So we take 2 minus 4.9 with an absolute value that gives us 2.9. We simply mean that it's 2.9 away from the average. We don't care if it's negative or positive. Sometimes we want what we call the mean absolute deviation. In other words, the average of the absolute deviation. In other words, we're going to take every one of those values. We're going to take the difference between the average and that particular value. We're going to sum them all up and then divide by the total number of values. That gives us the average deviation from the mean. Hmm. Well, when we use the word absolute, that means that we don't care if it's a positive or negative deviation. So be careful. If we add all the positive and negative, negative deviations and we take the average deviation, that average deviation can be close to zero. But if we take the mean absolute deviation, then we take the absolute value of the deviations, and then we get a true measure of how far our, all our values deviate or vary from the average value, Never, no matter if it's a negative value or a positive value. The variance, well, we take the mean absolute deviation, and we square each of those values. Hmm. So we take the difference between any one of the data points and the average value. When we square it, we don't care if that number was negative or positive since we square it. So we don't care if it's the mean absolute deviation. We simply take the deviations. We square them all. We then add them all up and divide by the total number of data points. And that gives us the variance. And finally, we take the square root of the variance. That gives us the standard deviation. Obviously, we're going to get much more into detail on all these various things. Notice this one important difference. Here we're dividing by n, and here we're dividing by n minus 1. Why is that? Well, if the, the data set represents all the values, then we divide by n. But if the data set is simply a sample of the whole population, 
then we divide by n minus 1 and we use the same principle when we deal with the standard deviation. If we simply have all the data points, we divide by n. If we, our data points that we have is simply a sample, then we divide by n minus 1. So those are the things that we're going to use to get a better idea of how valid, of how useful our mean, medium, mode, and mid-range is in res with respect to how the data is distributed, how the data is dispersed. And so these types of measures can give us a much better idea of how to deal with that. And that is how it's done.